In the news lately, there have been a lot of graphs like this one that show the amount of people that have died from coronavirus so far. Or this one that shows that same data on a logarithmic scale. These graphs can help us understand whether things are getting better or worse at any given time. But what they can't do is help us understand the relative impact of coronavirus compared to, say, cancer or car accidents. One way that we could do that is by comparing how many people have died from coronavirus compared to other leading causes of death in a given geography. Here's that comparison for New York. Even if no one else died this year from coronavirus, it would be the third leading cause of death. But unfortunately, more people will die in the coming months and years, so this comparison is a bit misleading. A better way to think about the relative impact of this pandemic would be to look at how many people typically die in a given week in New York City, and then see how that's changed since the pandemic began. As you can see, in less than a month, weekly deaths rose from 1,000 people to 6,000 due to coronavirus. And in cities and countries around the world, it's a similar picture. In France, weekly deaths rose by 34%. In Spain, they rose by 50%. And in Italy, they almost doubled. As pressure on states and countries to reopen the economy grows, I think this is important data to keep in mind. This virus is definitely not just the flu. It could easily be the leading cause of death in many places this year. And while we can't stop it in its tracks, we do know how to slow its spread. Everywhere that social distancing measures have been implemented, cases and deaths have fallen. But many public health experts warn that if we reopen our economies too early, they'll rise to the same or worse levels again. And as this data shows, a lot of people will die every week as a result. 